How you doing, people? Today we're going to take a quick look at Monkey Man. This was written by Dev Patel, directed by Dev Patel, produced by Dev Patel, and starring... Hang on. Um... Oh, Dev Patel. This is the story of a boy who is never officially named in the movie. I believe in the credits he's simply known as Kid, although later in life he adopts the fake name Bobby. Anyway, Bobby lives in a forest village in India and is inspired by tales of Hanuman, a Hindu deity who is part monkey, part man. One day, their village is massacred following a territorial dispute led by a spiritual guru and a corrupt police chief. The kid somehow survives, though sadly his mother does not. Many years later, the kid grows up and becomes a pit fighter of sorts, wearing a monkey mask when he steps into the ring and basically getting paid to take dives and bleed a lot. He also manages to get a job working in the kitchen of a very prestigious brothel that the corrupt police chief just happens to frequent. And he slowly works his way up the ranks of the Mumbai underground, getting closer and closer to revenge against those who murdered his mother. The trailer certainly gives off a lot of John Wick vibes, and they even name drop the John Wick franchise in this movie. And John Wick is great, but this is a bit deeper. It's John Wick with more socio-political commentary about poverty and the caste system and the treatment of transgender people. And John Wick is pretty much just pure fantasy. This is based more in the real world. There's a great scene that illustrates this where Bobby is running from some gangsters and he spots a window, so he runs up to it and jumps at the window and bounces right off. Because it turns out in the real world, jumping through a window is not easy to do. In the real world, windows are actually designed to not break. Because, duh, of course they are. And in this story, Bobby is definitely playing the long game in his quest for revenge. He has to go through a lot just to get his foot in the door at the brothel. And he slowly works his way through the ranks from the kitchen staff to the wait staff to the VIP wait staff, getting closer and closer to that damn police chief what murdered his mother. And sometimes things don't go quite according to plan, so he makes new plans. There's determination, and then there's this. And much like John Wick, the action sequences are brutal AF. Bobby dishes out an ungodly amount of punishment and takes it too. Not nearly as many headshots as we see in John Wick, but still brutal. Also, because of the John Wick inspiration, there is a dog in the movie, and no, the dog does not die. I believe this was originally going to be released by Netflix, but when the powers that be at Netflix saw the movie, I think they didn't really understand what they had. It clearly was not the movie they were expecting to get. I believe they came very close to canceling the release entirely, but thankfully Jordan Peele saw the movie and helped save it. He used his pull in Hollywood to convince Universal to buy the movie and release it to theaters, and I'm very happy he did. Patel does a great job in front of and behind the camera. I already knew he was a great actor, but I did not realize he could be such a great action star. I mean, the only other action movie I saw him in was The Last Airbender, and, well, we know what happened there. Suffice to say, this was much better. I loved all the improvised weapons that the kid uses in his fights. At one point, he actually starts shooting fireworks at people because... I guess if you don't have a gun, you make do. And there's a point where Bobby has to go into hiding and he takes shelter among a group of trans women who apparently aren't bothered by the police because no one wants anything to do with them. And there's a really cool training montage while he's hiding out in that temple where he's working on a punching bag and there's this guy playing a set of drums. I think it's called a tabla and he's like punching in time with the drums. It's actually really cool to watch. And apparently the guy playing the tabla in this movie, Zakir Hussein, is something of a legend. Like he's won several Grammys. And I kind of dig that they didn't want just any musician in this role. No, we want an honest-to-god maestro. I respect that. The main antagonist is a spiritual leader, Baba Shakti, played by Makaran Deshpande. I hope I'm saying that right. And I believe this is his English language debut, and he makes for a very good villain. He acts like he's this humble, spiritual man of the people, and really, he seems like the kind of asshole who believes his own bullshit, but really, he's just a power-hungry narcissist. I thought Pitobash did a pretty good job as the comic relief. He plays a gangster that Bobby befriends while he's working at the brothel and helps him make some money in the fight pits. He's a funny guy, I just wish there was a bit more of him in the movie. We also have Charlto Copley, which I believe may be due to the fact that Patel originally wanted Neil Blomkamp to direct the movie. He plays the promoter of the fight pits, just this sinister carnival barker type, and he is just a creep. And in this case, I mean that as a compliment. He's very good at what he does. Overall, this was a lot of fun, and I'm glad Patel was able to get this movie released. It has some brutal violence, but there's a really good story going on here as well. And if I still haven't sold you, there is a scene in this movie featuring the Monkey Man and his transgender army beating the shit out of corrupt cops. 
go see this movie. And that's all I have to say about Monkey Man. Till next time, take care.